Point of Work Trains. I'm Joey. And this has not gone anywhere like I thought it should or wanted to do or any of the above. Yeah. We're going to be all over the place. Okay. So we started installing the FX switches, right? Where are they? These things. We started installing these in the last one, part one. And I started installing them over there in front of my uh, western area. We had talked about it. We actually, Dakota wanted them over here on this bridge to start with. And I said, well, I wanted them over there. And that's where I started putting them in. And I had some trouble. You've probably seen in the video I was having some trouble. It was just, there was no planning. As Earl commented, it's like a true A-Fool podcast. No plans. None whatsoever. So... This is the third time that I have shot this video. We have it installed now. I'm going to just go ahead and say it was it was my fault. I had trouble getting it to work. It derailed a lot. There is a very interesting dynamic in this frog for these switches. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've prided myself on my big boy being fairly robust. It will take a normal Lego turn. You don't necessarily want to take it at speed. It will take a, uh, it'll go through a normal Lego switch. Again, you don't want to go through, at, you know, at speed. Uh, but my big boy wasn't even going through it. Took this little clip out. Well, I don't know how much of that we just got caught on video, but it completely turned the big boy over. I mean, it just throwing it off the track. And, you know, so I, I contact FF Bricks. I haven't heard back from them. It's just been a day. So, you know, whatever. Um, but what I've decided to do is give it a second try. I know that part of the layout has a little bit of a sag to it and i thought okay before i say okay we got problems they got problems i got problems, whatever we're gonna come over here well this bridge is solid okay it is a solid uh i don't know what it is like a three quarter inch um shelf okay it's like a ready-made shelf on two tuba floors that are running across here it is way over engineered um, it was just things that I had available, right? I knew the shelf over time because it's shelving material would want to sag. And I wanted, I wanted this bridge to be pretty solid because I know how things happen. Kids hang on stuff. I'll hang on. I get older. I'm going to put my hands on it and put weight on it. So I wanted this to be solid. So this is solid, solid. Also my mills plating uses those. I'm not going to have one to show. But the mosaic squares, I think they're 16 by 16 brick, uh, that like the mosaics use, like you know, the Batman, the Iron Man, all those. <clears throat> it, I use those. I bought some of those um, just to see how that was going to work. And I incorporated that into the, uh, into the bridge. So we're not dealing with a lot of plates or extra plates or bricks or uh, base plates. It's just right on top of that shelf. So that's solid. Also, it's a lot less bricks. So because they're bigger, they're, what are they? 16 by 16, I think. Preliminary running, preliminary testing that I've done is it works. So it is a little bumpy through the switches, a little more bumpy than I would have expected, but it does, the, the big boy does negotiate it now. And that's kind of, that's kind of been my thing. It's got to be able to negotiate it. The, the, uh, you know, I've done everything I can to try to help the big boy out. Wide radius tracks. We got wide radius nine volt tracks, which is FX bricks track. Uh, the outside is is uh, BT tracks. It's the injection molded R twenty. I think R one hundred and four inside R twenty on the outside. Uh, you know, just to make it look better. But my big boy will negotiate standard Lego tracks. It looks god awful weird. 
because it's sticking out over the rails all kinds of ways, but it'll do it. So now we're gonna do some running with the big boy across this switch setup we got right here. And as I, you know, talked about before, oh, I had white, all I had was white tiles. We have tiled completely underneath this switch and this switch. These are the little short half pieces here, but all underneath the switch is completely tiled. So we'll have to, we'll have to switch that up and uh, I don't know, either put light gray tiles or black tiles. Bricklink is still down. Um, so what I have in my store, I'm afraid to take anything out, even if I can find what I wanted. Um, so I had, had a big white, big bag of white tiles. <laughs> I have a bag of, of uh, dark tan tiles somewhere and I couldn't find them. So I uh, found the big white bag of tiles. So I know what I gotta pick up, clean up, but everything is flush, except for that frog, which apparently is designed that way. Okay, all right, let's do some train running. Let's go through here, we're gonna go through here backwards and then maybe we'll go through forward just to see what it looks like. Here we go. Not bad. Oh, we lost the cars. Let's go back and get the cars. Go put a helper magnet in. So we get to go back through them backwards. Have these little magnets. Sometimes the the Lego magnets, they don't want to flip. They get kind of stuck. So if you put these little, and these are not strong magnets, these are just ceramic magnets. Um, but they are the exact right, what is it? One half diameter, one half inch diameter or 1.2 centimeters. centimeters. Uh, and I just put them in between trains and it helps quite a bit. And if you're not paying attention and you bang them like that. All right, here we go again with a little onion. Set all the switches back to straight. To get the daylight running. All right, so that is my FX bricks. 40 um, 9 volt switches all right these are 9 volt L gauge compatible uh, I would call them picky I would say they call them precision I guess the difference is uh, you're gonna have to make sure everything is perfectly flat perfectly level uh, all the things that we probably don't do now you know, if we're doing shows or, you know, I, I've never had any problems with the train layout over there. And we have a, we have a, uh, siding over there, which the big boy has been in and out of that siding before. Should have took some video of it going through there. Um, it's close. The problem is it wants to hit everything because it spins and swings around. So at first I was really not real pleased. The installation was not going well. I was, uh, my, my big boy is the worst train. If, if that train will run, all the rest of the trains I have will run, no problem. Uh, and I was having trouble with it. So we got it worked out. Uh, and it's over here on a more stable, flat piece of real estate on the layout, uh, which is fine. It's, you know, it's in the middle of a, it's, we're not gonna use this switch crossover a lot, but it, you know, we will use it. So I don't know, I guess I'm feeling better about it now. Um, I can tell you three hours ago, I was not feeling very good at it at all. <laughs> In fact, I didn't contact the A-Fool podcast and told them, I said, hey, I'm, this is, I'm in trouble. So, yeah, well, 
thanks for watching and maybe I'll follow up with a little more train running here. So, <laughs> one more thing. I don't like Apple products, but I just figured out something. My big boy is multi power source, meaning it will run on nine volt and it will run on power functions. Um, I forgot <laughs> that the bridge has nine volt track on the outside loop. So when the big boy hit the track with its metal wheels started the metro liner <sighs> yikes that's just a me thing i forgot about so yeah i got that to look forward to all right uh I, I, my brain has taken all that i can take for the day so again thanks for watching i know that wasn't very much train running but uh i'll do another train video I was actually running trains when Dakota's here or something. Again, thanks for watching.